In this video, we're going to be looking at a concept called interest rate risk. Interest rate risk often refers to price risk. Now, price risk refers to the potential change in the bond price due to changes in interest rates. As we discussed before, there's an inverse relation between interest rates and bond prices. As interest rates go up, bond prices go down and vice versa. Which type of bonds are exposed to greater interest rate or price risk? Long-term bonds are exposed to more price risk than short-term bonds, right? Um, you know, if you buy a long-term bond, there's a greater chance that the interest rate could change over that certain period of time as opposed to a short-term bond. Uh, think about it. If you a one-year bond versus a 10-year bond, well, the interest rate can change in both situations, but there's a great, greater probability that the interest rate can fluctuate over a 10-year period as opposed to a short-term one-year period. Likewise, low coupon bonds have more price risk than high coupon bonds because typically the present value associated with a low coupon bond is going to be greater impacted by the change in interest rate as opposed to a high coupon bond. The reason that is is because a, the value of a bond that's a high coupon bond is it's going to be less affected by the interest rate because a lot of your value is also being derived from the high coupons that you received. On the flip side, you have what's called reinvestment risk. It's the uncertainty concerning rates at which cash flows can be reinvested. Think about it this way. If you have short-term bonds and you're comparing long-term bonds, let's say you have the option of choosing a one-year bond or a five-year bond. Uh, let's say the prevailing interest rate is 6%. If you buy the one-year bond, you'll get the interest rate of 6% for that one year. If you buy the five-year bond, so this would be one, two, three, four, and then five, you'll get 6% interest for each of those five years. However, after one year, let's say interest rates have dropped to 3%, you as a bondholder will have to reinvest from year one to year two in the one-year bond situation at 3%. So you have to reinvest at a lower interest rate, which you don't want to do because you rather earn 6% as opposed to 3% as a bondholder. Whereas with a long-term bond, regardless if the interest rate changes to 3% after one year, you bought a five-year bond, therefore your 6% is locked in for five years. You don't have to worry about the 3% drop in the interest rate. High coupon uh, rate bonds have more reinvestment risk than low coupon bonds. What does that mean? Well, think about it this way. Um, a high coupon bond, HCB, let's say it carries a 7% coupon. And a low coupon bond, LCB, carries a uh, coupon of 2%. Okay. So in the first bond, you're getting 70 bucks a year in coupons. The low coupon bond, you're getting 20 bucks a year in coupons. Well, um, look at the first situation. There's a greater probability of the interest rate falling, right? It can go down to six, it can go down to five, it can go to four, three, two, one, and, and in theory, it can go down to zero. So there's a greater likelihood or greater probability that interest rates can fall to a, to a smaller threshold. Whereas with the low coupon bond, the coupon rate is so low as it is that the likelihood that it fall, that's going to fall even further is very minimal. Yes, it can fall to 1%, and in theory it can fall to 0%, but since it's already at the kind of a, a floor already, the likelihood of it falling even further is very minimal. So that's why we say high coupon bonds have a greater probability of reinvestment risk. And again, if you want to see uh, you know changes to the bond price based on changes to um, you know, interest rates. This is a very nice looking graph in your, in your PowerPoint presentation. You know, if the interest rate is 10% and this was a 10% coupon, the bond would be trading at a par value of 1000. And that's precisely what we see. If the interest rates drop from 10 down to 5%, we know that bond prices are going to go up. With the one year bond, which is in the blue, the bond price goes up 47 bucks. At the same time, if the interest rates drops from 10 to 5%, notice what happens to the green 30-year bond. Its price goes up as well, but it goes up, grows by what, 760 bucks. Vice versa. 
If interest rates go from 10% up to 20%, so if interest rates increase, bond prices fall. You notice that the one-year bond does fall, but it only falls by 84 bucks, whereas the 30-year bond falls by roughly 500 bucks. So again, this is showing you that long-term bonds are exposed to more interest rate or price risk. Okay, and that concludes the discussion of interest rate and price rate.